Whenever you're about to buy a new product, and especially if it's expensive, you want to make sure that you're getting the best possible product that you possibly can. For this example, let's say that you're looking to buy a lawnmower. While most product pages are absolutely laden with reviews, sometimes you want to hear it from a different source. Whether you rightfully don't trust the reviews, or you're just looking for an expert's opinion on that particular product, you'll just turn to elsewhere on the internet to really tell it to you straight. So what do you do? You go to Google, you type in best lawnmowers, and then you hit enter. Bam! Thousands of articles are laid out in front of you. 15 best lawnmowers in 2020. Best lawnmowers, top rated and best selling mowers. 11 best lawnmowers of 2020. It goes on and on and on. All of these pages claim to list out the best of the best lawnmowers that you could possibly buy, and it's even updated for the current year. What could be wrong with this? A lot could be wrong with it. In fact, there is so much wrong with it that I believe it is single-handedly destroying the internet. So where in the world did they come from? These posts, we'll call them best posts, have been around for as long as the internet has existed. In fact, they reach way beyond the internet, way back to when physical publication reigned supreme, and I would like to pin them on Consumer Reports. Consumer Reports was founded in 1936 and was dedicated to unbiased product testing, investigative journalism, consumer-oriented research, public education, and consumer advocacy. Back then, there were very limited means to learning about a particular product and learning if you should buy it or not. You were essentially limited to only asking friends or family that have used it before or just trying it out for yourself. Consumer Reports ultimately wanted to give power to the consumer, something that they had lacked for so long. Over the years, they did some truly incredible things, including bringing about seatbelt laws and exposing the dangers of cigarettes. As a nonprofit, they truly put everything that they had into testing every single product on the market. They weren't affiliates, they weren't paid off, they were just dedicated to giving unbiased reviews. The introduction of Consumer Reports was revolutionary. Now, people had a reliable way to find out key information about products that they were buying every single day. And this information wasn't just from Joe next door, it was from real experts. I mean, look at these testing processes. You think that anybody puts this much effort into reviewing and testing light bulbs? I don't think so. Consumer Reports has always been a beacon of light in this space, but other people have started emerging and doing very similar things as them. Other experts in a wide variety of fields release product reviews and buying guides about a wide variety of different topics that they themselves are experts about, and this is great. More unbiased product reviews are great. People can make even more informed decisions when buying things. That is, until the reviews started getting bad. It started becoming very easy for non-experts to start entering the space, especially when the internet started becoming a lot more common and more and more people gained access to it. With the accessibility of the internet growing and more and more people being able to put out content on the internet, it definitely lowered the barriers to entry, and a lot of legitimate publishers did use this to their advantage to reach out to more people, but a lot of non non-experts got into the space as well. Now, you would have random consumers giving their opinions on products. Definitely not as helpful, but I wouldn't necessarily call it harmful. It really only became harmful when people started to see the obvious earning potential that was not being capitalized on. I mean, think about it. When somebody looks for a buyer's guide for a particular product, you really couldn't be showing any more buyer's intent. I mean, that's basically them saying, hey, I am in the market for this product. I want to buy this product right now. Just show me the best version of this product so that I can buy it. It is an absolute gold mine. Now, up until this point, there really wasn't a way to properly monetize this beyond blatant paid ads and sponsorships, and both of these things would have drastically hurt the reputation of these big publishers. That is until one giant change happened. The introduction of affiliate programs. Now, anybody who's anybody that has a computer or has access to a computer can make a lot of money simply by getting people to click their affiliate links and make a purchase. In my opinion, this has absolutely destroyed 
product reviews, and buyer's guides. What used to be an unbiased professional analysis of every product under the sun has now turned in how can I get more clicks and more conversions off of this particular keyword. I mean, people that have never owned a lawnmower before in their lives are going on and writing blog posts about what the best lawnmowers are that you can possibly buy. I mean, what? Instead of just ranting blindly about why this sucks, I'm gonna give you three concrete reasons why this is terrible for both online publications and consumer information. First and foremost, these are not experts publishing these reviews most of the time. The standards for these product reviews and best of lists used to be incredibly high. If you weren't an expert in your space or had countless experience with that product, absolutely nobody would listen to you. Now, literally anybody that has access to a computer can publish one of these guides. Yes, there are still legitimate experts constantly releasing these guides all the time, and that's totally fine, but most people that are doing this are not actual experts. Many products, especially when they're in the health and wellness space, have a lot of caveats and fine points that you would not know about unless you were either an expert in the field or you had extensive experience with that particular product. If you're writing about the best protein powders, but you have not studied health sciences, then you would not be able to give an actual helpful analysis on why this particular powder is the best powder. Everything is very surface level. In fact, this can be extremely dangerous in some cases. I'm going to give you two examples where I would consider consider myself an expert in the field because of years of experience and I'm able to recognize the dangers that these two things pose. First of all, something broad like best ab belts. You know those belts that you always see that like go over your abs and vibrate that looks like something out of the 70s? Yeah, those things. This is entirely pseudoscience. These ab belts may result in minuscule muscle gain, but other than that, they do absolutely nothing. Now, this is harmful not only because it's a waste of money, but also because people are going to buy this product and use it instead of eating healthy and going to the gym. So it is directly negatively impacting their health, even if the ab belt itself is not harming them. If you don't go to the gym or you don't know anything about physical fitness, you may not know this. You may fall victim to this, but if this were only limited to experts in the health and fitness in a space Every expert would tell you there is no such thing as the best ab belt because they are all utter garbage and you should not buy them at all. Second off, let's look at best ferret food. I choose this one because I have owned ferrets for a good portion of my life and there are actually a surprising amount of caveats that are involved with them. Ferrets actually have very specific dietary requirements that you would really only know through extensive research or owning a ferret for quite a long time. For example, they need about between 40 and 60% protein, 20% fat, and about 4% fiber content in their food. Also, the first ingredients need to be a whole meat like chicken or duck, and they absolutely need to avoid any type of fruit and vegetable, especially peas. There are tons of food on the market, even really, really high selling ones on Amazon that do not adhere to these guidelines, and feeding your ferret these foods can actually make them sick and lower their lifespans significantly. So buyer's guides list these unhealthy foods as some of the best foods that you could possibly buy. Totally irresponsible. And like I said, these are just two examples of products I just pulled out of thin air because I would think that I am an expert in those fields. But this same concept applies to hundreds, if not thousands of other products that are being written about. Two, these aren't unbiased product reviews anymore. They're straight up sales pitches. A reason behind why Consumer Reports is so respected is because they are entirely unbiased. They do not receive any money or sponsorships for better reviews given. They will give their real opinion on a product because they have no skin in the game other than that. So they theoretically have absolutely no problem saying that 
every single product sucks. However, with all of these affiliate sites, their well-being is directly tied into the affiliate commissions that they make. If they aren't referring people to these websites and converting them into sales, they're not getting paid. So what do they do? They turn every single product review into a sales pitch. When you're only ever making money off of people buying these products, why would you ever talk bad about them? There is a massive conflict of interest here. Seriously, just go to like any buyer's guide online and read a review of a product. Instead of being an equal distribution of pros and cons and legitimate criticisms of a product, it's going to be 95% features and pros and benefits that a product brings with 5% massively downplayed cons. Look at this one for best lawnmowers, for example. Their top rated pick, which happens to cost $2,197 and would net them a cool $66 commission per sale by the way, is this lawnmower. Look at how much they talk this lawnmower up. They spend 838 words talking about why riding mowers are awesome and covering all of the pros of this particular mower. You want to know the cons? 45 words. And these are barely even cons. It's bulky in size and a little high in price. Give me a break. Talk about reliability issues. Talk about fuel consumption. Talk about anything negative about the product. These buyer's guides downplay cons so much it is absolutely ridiculous. They don't want to turn people away from a potential sale, so they will do anything but talk negatively about these products. This is, in my opinion, the worst part. And then number three, they're not helpful in literally any way. While numbers one and two basically equate to this number three, there's another aspect to it as well. Since these people don't have any actual real experience with the products themselves, where do they get the information that they put on these buyer's guides and reviews from? Oh, right, from the product page. You know, the place where professional marketers have worked to paint the product in the best light possible. Seriously, go back through any buyer's guide and compare it to the product page where that product is listed. I can guarantee you it's going to look like a copy and paste. So let's go ahead and look at this lawnmower again, for example. Reinforced cutting deck, air induction, cast iron axle, cutting height adjustment, hydrostatic transmission. They're all features copied and pasted from the product page. This is information that literally anybody could find after six minutes of research. No constructive criticisms, no personal experiences or anecdotes, and really nothing that would be beneficial to the customer. It's just copied and pasted. Now, sometimes they'll go into the product reviews and copy and paste some things from there, which, you know, it has its merits, but it's definitely not worth an entire buyer's guide. All that these posts are are compilations of the best selling and most expensive products. That's it. Now, like I said, there are some people that are doing this right. Big publications like The Wirecutter have the budgets to purchase the products they're reviewing and the authority that upholds them to very high standards. Sure, they're affiliates for most, if not all, of these products, but at least their review process is extremely thorough. These independent publishers, though, offer absolutely nothing beneficial to the consumers, and all that they are doing is harming potential customers that are looking for an expert's real opinion. Yes, they make money, and they're really only going to become more popular because of that. But man, I just wish publishers had some integrity with what they published. They're giving bloggers a bad name, and they're overall damaging the online information space. So hopefully you guys liked this video. If you did and you want to see more like it, go ahead and subscribe down below and hit that bell icon so you always get notified. Also, like the video, comment, all that stuff. Check out those videos over there, you'll like those, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out, say bye.